it sometimes happens in poker you know you have a very smooth run you have the setups on your side your bluffs are working out for most of the time and then you just win two three big hands uh this is a very standard call here against Vattenlos. he's going to be reshoving a lot of broadway suited ace in this board um yeah just no way we can fold here for 15 big blinds <laughs> Final table of the 25k EPT online high roller. Uh, day one, you already saw the highlights. And for the second day for the final table, I thought, why not going over all whole, whole cards? I think that's pretty interesting. Big credits here to Kali Poker TV who are uploading uh, this footage on a regular basis. High roller tournaments, uh, Scoop, W Coop from different poker sites. So let's just jump right into the action of course it's two and a half hours i won't be able to go through every single spot i'm going to go over the most interesting spots here um simply because we won't have the time that was a very interesting spot here to begin with uh one of the yeah earlier hands monkey boss opts to limp he was playing a very interesting strategy I think it's not too bad to do a lot of limping on final tables. I think he just overdid it a little bit and he didn't adjust properly. Uh, button here, I think he has a clear ISO raise. I think if he was a little bit more observant on final two tables, I would not be afraid of monkey boss uh, uh, limping a lot here. And that's exactly what I did. I think I have uh, lots of forward equity. I, I'm investing 330,000 now to win. 358,000, I think that's going to be working more than 50% of the time. So I think I have a very profitable bluff race here, especially with my blocker. I block aces and if I get caught, I can still hit something. And as you can see here, the enormous amount of fold equity you have with those raises, we get even ace nine suited to fold. Uh, again, here, eight six suited. I think that's a, that's a very bad limp. Um, and I, I do believe he got punished for it quite a lot. Uh, same again here, ace nine off is definitely not a hand you want to be playing here. And Ragila starts attacking it. Uh, I really like this race. Um, I, he probably would have, if he now would have seen that he limps three times in a row, uh, started attacking that early as well. Uh, Ragila goes for small seabed, Nazas folds. I think, uh, I would call at least once. Uh, with the back to flush, but also it looks quite strong, right? He isos from low jack. If he would iso from cutoff or button, I think Nasa would call at least once. But yeah, I think against this very small size sizing, we we have to call once here, even despite of ICM. It's it's not like he's going to risk his entire stack here, right? It's good to see that I was able to chip up. Okay, that that was very interesting. Of course, this is a no brainer defend here since i also cover everyone i'm not going to be super loose but i'm also not going to be super tight I, I would probably open race close to what i'm supposed to open race in chip ev um maybe a tiny bit looser since i cover everyone but yeah that was definitely a very a very tight defend or very tight fold uh as it suited clear open race uh, i think east situation here he has a reasonable bluff three bet blocking kings blocking queens he gets us to fold ace eight suited ace nine suited ace ten off ace jack off and monkey boss has a clear call i think that's pretty standard we have a clear check uh turn yeah he goes for a very interesting bet i think it's a little bit of I mean, he got very lucky lucky that I have ace eight suited here. I'm not opening queen eight or jack eight suited. Maybe 9-8 suited, but he's blocking those. So I have still some pot controlled king 9, king 10 suited, perhaps some king jack suited. I have queens, I have jacks, I still have slow plays. Um, my flush draws, I'm going to be betting myself un unless I have a strong flush draw, uh, like ace, queen, and club. So he's going for a very large bet. In this instance, yeah, it works. And I got lucky on the river, but I just think that his sizing. Also, if he goes a little bit down, you know, I I, I might call pocket sixes or I might call like uh, an ace, queen, ace, jack, which he also doesn't mind where I only have six outs. So, uh, 
yeah, a little too big I, for my taste, for at least for my taste, right? Always take it a little with a grain of salt. That's just how I would play it. Uh, Martha opens it, and uh, I think Ragila has a very standard, um, yeah, three bet. Or I also like the shove here. I think it's pretty good, even though we're quite deep. But I mean, even if I have ace king, I have to fold. So yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, three-way here. I think, yeah, I mean, Nasa is in a very dicey spot here with his sevens. Um, I think calling once is fine, and and Marathor certainly has to call here and also call the chair, and he can still be good against Ragila's ace-queen, ace-jack, one diamond. Yeah, so, and on the river, he has a clear forward. Uh, he bets half pot or round half pot. Yeah, Martha just it's a fine regem here. Whereas actually, if you think about it, in an ICM, uh, Nasa is not going. To, I don't think he's going to call. I ah, might call nines, but let's say if Nasa never calls nines in this spot because of ICM, then ace ace ten off is actually a better call because we see Nasa is going to be opening hands like king jack, king ten, queen ten, jack ten, uh, maybe some weaker aces. So you have a high AV calling and playing in position. Whereas as regem, then a hand like ace four suited performs much better because you unblock a lot of Nasa's race forward, like, you know, queen jack, jack 10, you still have an ace, you block ace, king, and aces. Um, you have equity against kings, queens, jacks if Nasa wakes up with a hand. So in these spots, you always want to be looking to unblock uh, those broad rays. However, if your opponent is going to race call sevens, eights, then ace 10 becomes a better rejump, of course. But when calling ranges are very narrow, it's actually better to have a wheel ace. Yeah. Uh, I actually thought at some point he would start adjusting and not limping so wide. I wouldn't mind in ra raising here as well. Uh, you will see later on that I, I was um, pacing up quite a lot. And then he opens aces, so he was for sure playing very exploitative. So his raises were always a little stronger. Uh, that was the first very interesting spot here where Ragila uh, po post-flop, very, very tricky post-flop spot for me. I think a7 suited just wants to call. We don't really want to yeah, three bet a lot against the chip leader when there's a 10 big blind shorty, 15 big blind shorty, uh, another 12 big blind shorty or 13 big blind shorty. Uh, I think Nasa though has a very nice rejamming spot. I would just rejam here. Um, I think it's better than calling. There's already 400k in the middle. We're gonna still be calling hands like 9-8 suited here. As you can see, a7 suited, yes. And Ragila is gonna be opening super wide. I think that's a very nice spot for him to rejam wide. A good flop for us. Uh, we call, of course, the C bet, and on the turn he bets pot. And I think in theory, we are supposed to call, of course. We're gonna have also floats, we're gonna have um, you know, we're going to be calling sevens and, and sixes on this flop, nines and tens at least once, right? So now if we start folding the majority of our aces plus our the middling pairs and we only call maybe ace queen and, and, and strong 8x, then of course we're getting exploited, right? But this is just something based on my experience that I believe that people are getting too greedy because they, they know we're going to have an ace a decent amount of the time, so I think he's going to be on a strong ace or a strong eight. Against certain players, I would not fold. We're also going to see later on a very beautifully played hand by Malaka style. Um, but I just, I think that on average here, you're going to be looking into an eight or an ace. Yeah, pocket nines. Uh, a monkey limps again. Uh, that's not a good limp with that stack size from that position. Yeah, he reshots. Of course, we can't call here. Um, even though we are ahead. 
that's just ICM. Um, Ragila bets here, it's three way, he opens from under the gun. Martha decides to raise. Um, Ragila was not playing overly aggressive. I just think that, like, of course, he was playing loose as a chip leader, but not like super out of line where he's going to have queen 10 on this board. So I don't think you want to get it in on this flop where your opponent can have a lot of overpairs. And even against flush draws, we're not performing so well when you have a bunch of shorter stacks. I mean, he was third in chips here. So the ICM is pretty big on him. Uh, so I would say that's a bit of an overplay. But uh, yeah. A good discipline forward from NASA. I mean, okay, this limp is just completely... A nice jam here from Malaka, who probably also started adapting uh, kings. We had kings, we got no action there. Yeah, and I also started just um, attacking his raises and his limbs, who I realized he is just a little too loose. And we have a standard jam there with queen jack off, nothing happens. Good regem here by Ragila, but unfortunately it didn't work out. I would just choose a sizing where he three bets to 600k. So if in case we wake up with a hand, he can still fold. Because there's still the chance that we wake up. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be calling aces, kings, queens, perhaps even jacks. I just think that he's never going to be shoving aces or kings. So um, yeah, we're running into eights to jacks. And so maybe even, I'm, I'm even calling tens. Now he's forward screen jack off. I think this is actually a better limp than let's say pocket fives with that stack size. Yeah, I open jacks in front of the gun. Vattenlos goes for a check race. And of course with that stack to pot ratio. And again, someone as aggressive as Vattenlos can be. Uh, I'm not folding jacks here. Oh, of course his race looks strong, but I know that he knows that his race looks strong, so he can also reverse it. Discipline forward with a 10-7 off here. And uh, that's interesting, Malaka jams. I would call, I mean, Malaka is going to be shoving a lot of weaker hands. Uh, it's nine, nine and a half big blinds. He's going to be shoving a lot of suited kings, a lot of broadways. I think King Jack off is too strong here to fold. Uh, I would, I think it's a pretty clear call. I would, I think King 10 off is where it gets dicey. Okay. I mean, uh, monkey boss here just calls where he probably just wants to jam, especially now where easy has, uh, where triple E has a lot of like weaker hands. I mean, he has nine big blinds, right? So if he has ace and suited, if you king jack suited, he's going to call. Um, that was an interesting hand. I opened the seven nine suited. I think I don't want to get out to out of line. My range is really wide. His flaying range is going to be really strong. Speaking about out of line, not getting out of line and then... <laughs> <laughs> then the, this river play anyway um on the river i think his bet is fine so i decided to raise simply because i know that he he's going very thin for value like queen jack queen 10 is certainly betting ace queen even like he, he might even be betting ace nine i'm not sure trying to get a hero call from ace jack ace 10 so we certainly can have some river raises i mean i can have some slow plays um some very occasional ones and i have all pocket nines in my range so of course i want to block his nine so i think just a just an ace nine uh, sorry uh, just a nine x hand not blocking his um not blocking his bluffs i also think he never has jack 10 um so i might have shot on value where he's bluffing ace jack ace 10 i'm not sure um but yeah, I really like I really like the race in hindsight because I think he's going to be betting a lot of queen x, 
King X might start betting the turn, so especially stronger ones, King Queen, King Jack. Yeah, and we're very often gonna get gonna get him off a queen, which was uh, I was hoping. And of course, we have to make it big because we either we represent maybe a Jack Ten type of hand or a boat, right? So it's good to to block pocket nines here, which he can certainly have in his range. I can go it. We open no action. Yeah, I think Malaka's range is going to be quite strong here, so I just folded the king five off, which turned to be all turned to be a good fold. It's always good to see. Uh, it's I, I wouldn't mind if someone defends there, but uh, ace for suited here, same principle. I would be shoving more the wheel aces, call these, play in position against his jack ten, king tens. Uh, flop is, yeah, I think I have to float this flop with a bit of back to equity. Um, it's it's not horrible though. Okay, that was a very interesting hand. Malak opens from under the gun. We call the cutoff. I think until the river, everything is standard. He shouldn't be doing a lot of betting here. Um, I, I should just check back. On the river, he goes for an overbet. And my thought process in this hand is, his queen jack, jack 10 is often going to start betting the turn or the flop, right? He has a draw. So he's not going to have a lot of jack 10s and queen jacks here. And he's only going to have the suited combos. So I was thinking he is either bluffing king queen or he has ace king and ace queen. And some of the king queen suited might just chuff pre. So it was really hard to find bluffs. And he can still have traps. He can have uh, boats. He can, yeah, of course, have um, aces maybe as a slow play. I don't know. And then all he is going to play ace, king, ace, queen, 100% like this. Um, I don't think he's shoving all of them pre. But if he's raising them, he's going to play them like this until the river. So, and... Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I just don't think he's having a lot of jack tens and queen jacks here. So... <laughs> Just a very annoying spot, and that's why I thought it's really hard to find bluffs. And this is just a spot where I have to give him the credit of playing a hand just simply better as I did, and this happens. Um, I made the wrong laydown, and that's okay. Yeah, Ace Jack here. Ace Jack was killing us a little bit. <laughs> um, Ace King Seven. Yeah, of course, more C bet. Check is fine as well. Uh, we check all the churn and river. We just have to check forward. Luckily, he checks back. I would have fought it anyway, I think. Uh, yeah, we kind of lost the minimum there. It was a bit of a bummer, but... Ace-king off here. I think he's just going to shove. Also folds the ace deuce, which is very interesting, which I would have never folded there. Especially when you're the shortest stack. You can you can do some things, right? You can be a bit more aggressive. Uh yeah, going for a big turn C bet here. Good shot or good play here by Ragila. Max pressure. You see if he limps, Vatnos might have jammed his A7. So now if he open jams, that's that's very beautiful ICM execution. Yeah, I think 10 is just good jam here. Uh, Nasa opens the kings. Queen deals 6, good flop. Uh, he C bets. Ragila calls. Nasa bets. And rivers and ace. And yeah. Uh, unlucky river for Nasa there. He would sh certainly have jammed and maybe would have gotten some forts there. Race has suited also a good hand to open race. No, okay. I think this is like a, a decent hand to, to open. You can still have some race forwards, right? You don't have to be play, uh, playing overly tight. Okay, this was a big hand here. Jack 10. So f the thing is, raising wouldn't be wrong, but 
I do like to simplify these spots a little bit more. Uh, he's going to have a very wide range. So for me, it makes a lot of sense to play my stronger hands a little slower. Um, he's not going to be stacking off queens or kings here on this board. So he also needs to have an incredible strong hand. And our ICM is huge against him with all these shorties. So that's where I try to keep it more simple. Just call it. Yes, I will sacrifice MEV because he can check back a lot of hands. But I will also give him the opportunity to bluff into me. And yeah, terrible turn. Great river. This is where you need the setups. This is where you need to have some lucky gems we call. And we are the chip leader. So yeah, that's just... Um, as uh, cooler, nothing you can really do. Uh, a seven suited here. Yeah, it's interesting that I limp. I think this is a miss. I think I mean not a mistake, but I should just jam. I would just again race to like nine hundred k. Then I can fold if Nasa wakes up. Uh, so Nasa is taking that spot. <laughs> A uh, good hand to check it down here. Nothing so spectacular. He goes for a block. But, and that's what I mean. That was my read on him. That he goes very thin for value. Like, I don't think he should be betting a 6 here. Like, just bluff catch against my 10-9 in hearts or um, jack-9 in, 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 in hearts. You know, it's just you want to have some bluff catches. And if you bet everything, I, I don't really think you. this is a bet here. Um, he never gets caught by worse. This is more like... A bet of, I don't really what to do, so let's just bet and and hope for the best. My impression, um, it's just a small bet, so it's it's never gonna be expensive or costly. Uh, we open a seven. Nasa calls the button, which is a good call. Yeah, and I mean river, we have a mandatory call. That's just. <laughs> I was not the, the moment if I know he bets under pot, we have to snap call. If he starts betting over betting, then I might have started folding. Ace nine off here, clear jam, and monkey boss has an absolutely no brainer call. Um, because E, triple E, he's very often going to be inducing with jacks plus, so he has deuces to uh, ace 10, ace jack, some broadways, of course, but he's gonna be having him dominated so often so yeah uh, but he folded we open a sign off with our stack very standard and yeah we're just gonna give it up on this on this board here <clears throat> monkey opens button loss reshafts And we get a walk with a check seven. I mean, he tries to balance it a bit. He limps here with ace 10 suited, but the problem is he's just limping way too many hands. And under ICM, it's, it's not going to be enough just because once in a while you also limp your strong hands, he's still going to have way too many uh, weak holdings. And which allows your opponent to make a lot of money with very aggressive plays. Uh, Nasa opens the jack 10 off, we defend 6-5 off. Um, yeah, we have a standard call. Good sizing by Nasa, I think you want to have some bigger sizings. I'm not, I mean, with ICM where we have all the 9.6 and, and as even 6.3 suited, 9.3 suited, we have threes. Um, can be a little bit dicey. I mean, here for now we have a clear call and then on the turn, that's a very good turn for us. We want to do start some leading, just get him to fold his jack tens, queen tens, queen jacks. Um, So we do it with all sands just for pure protection. Uh, just fold out his hair. And we could even consider turning this hand to bluff against his over pairs because like, we have so many 9x and flushes that we, we, we need to bluff a lot there. 
yeah, Jack Deuce, I limp. Um, raising is fine as well. And on the river with Jack High here, certainly going for a delayed bet. Monkey Boss again opens uh, way way too loose of an open. Uh, Uh, don't I mean this would be a standard C bet, but I already had the feeling that his range is a little bit tighter, so you might not have that much air. So this is where I make small adjustments based on who I'm playing against, and I just had a feeling that um yeah, he's going to be rather strong. A lot of A size, a lot of king X suited hands, so just wanted to keep the pot small. <clears throat> And here the king queen, which he's betting on the turn. Wait, sorry, here we go. Ace jack, Nasa gems. I mean, that's just very standard, and we have to fold. Yeah, and now I started also punishing his, his late position opens more through winning the king for off. You can just. If you think someone is way too loose preflop, just start three betting more <clears throat> from the big blind. Nasa with uh, the three bet here, I think this is where I want to do a lot of four bet shoving with those hands. Again, um, suited aces are pretty good. Uh, he's going to have some, you know, uh, King nines, king tens, perhaps king eight. So I don't really want to have an eight, a nine, or ten in my hand as a bluff. I want to increase the chance that it has he has a three bet fold, right? That's what I'm hoping for to just pick up the dead money. And the suited wheel aces once again, since he's going to be three bet calling tens plus, an ace five suited is much better than let's say ace nine suited because if we have ace nine suited, he has ace ten. We're in a much worse shape because with ace five we have the chance to hit a wheel. So those low suited aces are quite okay um, as as forward gems. And I would of course only do that against opponents who I know are, are capable of playing quite aggressively in these spots. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what, th this is weird. I don't know what's the thought process behind the way he has been playing. Usually small ball, a lot of limping, calling. This hand either jam or call, but this should never be a three bet. And especially on, on stakes where people can punish that and <laughs> Triple E just rips it into his face. And yeah. Nasa opens. Oh, that kid. That was a very interesting hand. Um. Yeah, I think good check back by him. We go for a big bet. I would certainly bluff my draws on my 3x, my 9x. And we jam the river. And Nasa was tanking for very long and ended up calling. <clears throat> So here's my thought process. I think the spades are relevant because we're not supposed to be bluffing with spades. If I have jack 10 in spades or queen jack in spades or queen 7 in spades, I want to, I would give up because I want my opponent, like let's say that Nasa has king queen in spades. He wouldn't be calling with king queen in spades. He can have queen jack in spades, queen 10 in spades. So for me, it's much better to bluff with, let's say with 10, 7 in hearts where I get all these auto folds from his king high, queen high flush draws, right? So that's why I shouldn't be bluffing with, let's say, the queen in spades myself, 
because then it decreases the chance that NASA has a flush draw and actually NASA was trapping on the flop, he has an overpair. So that's why when NASA has the queen in spades, it might look at first that's actually a, a bad bluff catcher, but actually it isn't. Whereas ace queen in spades, it's a much better bluff catcher than let's say ace 10 in, 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 in diamonds or ace 10 in, in hearts in case he called the, the turn with, with that against that sizing. So here's where you really need to think about the suits. <clears throat> I still do believe that against population, they might end up bluffing a little bit too much with busted flush draws. So I usually still try to stay away from bluff catching with blockers that block my opponent's flush draws. Sometimes I feel like people feel too committed. Um, People feel too committed to their hand and then they end up keep bluffing their uh, busted flush draws. So my main bluffs, the five is pretty bad for NASA. My six, seven gets there. I still have 10, seven, um, 10, six perhaps, um, but only the suited combos, right? So it's not that much anymore. Maybe a very weak flush draw, like four deuce and spades. I mean, I defend three deuce and clubs, so I will also defend four deuce and spades. I could have just like six, four in spades. I think, I think my personal opinion, no offense to NASA, but I really think this is not a good call with ICM, right? He needs to be, I'm jamming pot, so he needs to have 33% equity. And this is where we can just do some um, basic math. Uh, and this is one of the best ways to start understanding equities. Uh, so I would highly recommend everyone to work a lot with Power Equilab. Um, so what can we have? We have all the suited 3x, maybe not eighth yeah uh, i would defend more suited 3x uh, ace three off for sure four three off five three off want to be connected uh i will have all the 10 7 suited 10 6 suited Jack 10 suited, Queen 10 suited, and then perhaps some some Jack 10 offs, Queen 10 offs, 7 6 suited all combos. Uh, I can jam some Ace 9s and King 9s. Because I know his range is very over, like ace high heavy. Probably I wanna, yeah. Yeah, I probably wanna jam. Yeah. Or maybe I jam like like this. Checking some ace nines, king nines. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good for now. Let's just get a first, first result. And you see, in Chippy V, it would probably be fine bluff catcher, but now ICM comes into play. This is just pure Chippy V. So his ICM, his risk premium is huge. So at least 10%. I don't know the exact number. So that need, means he actually needs 46%, right? He needs 46%. And this would essentially mean he needs to have, yeah, like even, let's say, even an over pair. Yeah, to blocks even a lot of bluffs with pocket tens. So let's see aces. Aces is where, you know, he can start calling. Consider calling. It's just a spot where we have so many straights and trips where he just needs to overfold a bunch. Um, I mean, even if I go complete bananas and bluff like everything, even if it's a busted flush draw. I, I don't think I defend 10-7 off. That's 
I prefer 5-3 off over 10-7 off, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, then I really need to bluff everything, like everything, but I'm not going to be bluffing if I have a spade in my hand. Just, it's, it's as, as easy as that. But it was good for us. It was a pretty big pot. Um, and then let's check a couple more key hands. Yeah, most of the other hands were <clears throat> fairly standard, I think. Yeah, Vatanlos with a very interesting prefab open race here with Queen six suited. But he was playing his image there. He 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 was rather tight or very solid. So Monkey Boss with a limp here. Uh works against Ragila. And Yeah, so now he's very short. And once again, Monkey Boss limps. I think, again, he's going to be on a very wide range. So I decided to make a little loosey-goosey move. Also work. You can see how much pressure you apply, right? I think against most wrecks, they wouldn't fold 10 here, of course. And I wouldn't be also out of line against other players. Yeah, so very interesting to see <laughs> that he folded 10s there. But uh, yeah, here ten six suited. I think standard C bet. Um, I'm going for another very small second barrel. If he doesn't pick up the flush draw, if he has king deuce and spades, and he has all these king high back to flush draw, ace high back to flush draw, um, so that works really well. That's a very profitable bet against his range. Uh, Fronchi has a flush draw and he makes a very weird turn, turn lead. I have to say, I, it was tempting. He was not rapping a lot. I was about to jam on his, over his riverbed, but yeah, I was, I was a little confused what he's trying to represent there. Yeah, once again, I think this is not a good open race here. Um, under <coughs> ICM, you really need to fold here. It's just so easy to punish that. Um, I, I'm going to be reshoving so wide uh, in the spot, and, and most of the high stakes wrecks would regen really wide here. Yeah, good shoving. Oh, Vatnos folds the ace force here. That's, that's very disciplined. Yeah, with no equity here, I don't think we have any any business in betting. And on the turn, very good spot to delay C bet. And then if the let's say he's gonna have a lot of nine eights, seven fives, if uh, diamond draws, so if the diamond draw bricks, I would also bluff this combo, getting him to four diamond draws, some four X. Okay, that's that was weird here. The spot where Monkey Boss leads leads the small blind, uh, and I don't know how he can fold a eight off there, but sometimes how it is. Yeah, now I think Vatno is going to be jamming any pair, so he's going to be inducing with aces kings. He's going to be shoving a lot of a six. Uh, he's now close to the other stack, so I think with sixes uh, we have we have a call. But he, unfortunately, he wakes up with eights. <clears throat> and yeah, on the river, very unlucky for Regila. Triple E jams, and yeah, I don't see how Regila can fold there. And of course, I'm also, since I'm attacking his limbs a lot, I am also raising there quite. Quite loose. Ah, 
I'm gonna have more king eggs and deuce eggs, so I can certainly have a leading range there on the turn. And wherever I just go. It's my main bluff would be like queen high, jack high. If I have some he has a really bad blocker, so like jack ten and clubs, queen jack and clubs, maybe something like queen three and clubs. And those kind of hands I would be choosing here as a bluff. Aces, no action. Oh, it's so interesting that he limps this one. And he really limps forward for like 10 big blinds, ace, nine suited on the button. I mean, in this instance, it worked, but this is just no piano, no piano. Yeah, on the river, I think we should always bet. Especially against him where he's going to be capped to a lot of 4x, ace high, one club. So I think, yeah, I have a, I, have a, I can even go back. Like he's just going to have 4x, I feel like 90% of the time. And we can be bluffing with, let's say I have 9-4 off with 9, or 9-3 off with 9 in clubs, complete, complete air ball. I can just go very big here in these spots. Yeah, king seven off. I think some people might be surprised, but we can certainly raise fold here um, with a little bit of ICM. Uh, we're going to be completely demolished by his reshoving range, right? With no fold equity, we never, we're almost never going to have a flip. Uh, we're going to be dominated most of the time. So, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, king three. Also, we just raise fold. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind actually just going bigger and play it as a jam. Just raise to 600k and commit ourselves against him. And I think then he would have probably folded his ace deuce. Yeah, and that's what I start. I realized, okay, he starts reshoving more. So these hands that would be okay to just jam against his big blind um, and small blind is going to be very tight i was just trying to raise bigger sizing so yeah and even get to f him to full king turn off <clears throat> Yeah, ace four, uh, standard limb call. We could also raise on the flop with one overcard, back to flush draw, back to a gut shot. Still being okay, f uh, performing a key against his bluffs. Uh, on the turn, I think we just have to check forward. We have a very weak flush draw. I was thinking, but yeah. Uh, pretty annoying that he uh, hits his five. Oh, let's see the other all the other spots where there was one spot that was quite interesting yeah we again doing the same with king ten off raising to yeah close to five big blinds <clears throat> six big blinds and uh he jams it in and we win that flip Yeah, Ace didn't suit it here. That's now where it sometimes happens in poker. You know, you have a very smooth run. You have the setups on your side. Your bluffs are working out for most of the time. And then you just win two, three big hands. Uh, this is a very standard call here against Vatten Lowe's. He's going to be reshoving a lot of Broadway suited Ace in this board. Um, yeah, just no way we can fold here for 15 big blinds. <clears throat> We couldn't win that flip. Yeah, you get punished for not dealing, of course. <laughs> I 
Uh, some of these lower pairs you want to check back with a very high frequency. 7-4 suited, reasonable open raise from the small blind. He wakes up with kings. Ace it off, I think also fine open. He finds a pretty good three bet here. I like it. Uh, of course, nothing we can do with ace seven off. Yeah, where he has a lot of bluffs with his 7 8 jack 8 where we have a gacha nova card i think we have to call at least once and uh, being in position so as you can see here and that's very important for the next hand that is coming up um i know that vatnos can reach up really wide i mean this is 25 bigs here for with ace four suited um <clears throat> Whereas a lot, a lot of other players would call or maybe 3-bit forward. You see NASA early 3-bit forwards in this spot. So it's very important to know the tendencies of, of each player. Is he flatting those hands? Is he reshoving those hands? Um, then I see that I like to mix in some 3-bit, especially when we're a little deeper. He was going to start flatting more than shoving. If I have more like around 4 million, I would probably just call. Um, and he, as you can see, we get him to fold some a strong hand here as well. Yeah, King Queen suited here. Just check forward. Yeah, that was that was an interesting hand here. He opens the button we called six four suited. Um, <coughs> check raising on the flop is an option. I don't think he would have fought against the race with two overs and a back to flush draw. And on the chair, yeah, it's just with ICM. I know he's gonna have a lot of bluffs, but it's just it's just such a good card for him. Like he has to bluff a lot. We we barely have any jack X. Um So yeah, it's just a very very ugly spot and I think we just have to fold. Uh, I don't think call would be horrible. I think it's very, very marginal. I think someone wants to, but then if there were a break, so the break, break, the river is low card, like a seven, a five or a deuce or even an eight, or maybe not an eight, but like seven where all is queen eights, queen nines, king queens, ace queens break. We might have to find some hero cards with our six, not blocking any of his queen nine, queen eight uh, bluffs. Yeah, that was the spot and uh, we're now 22 big blinds. So he's going to be reshoving any any pair. He's going to be reshoving ace deuce, ace three, ace four. Um, of course, he's also shoving sixes to tens. He's going to sh be shoving all the broad, a lot of the broadways. I know king, queen, king, jack, where others would call. So I think against button laws, I'm more inclined to call here. Uh, oops. It's, it's quite, it's quite margin. I wouldn't call against everyone. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's in the long run, it's going to be okay. It was just in this specific spot. <clears throat> and we shove King seven and we run into King Jack and that was our right. I think it was a pretty interesting final table, especially streaming the first day on Twitch. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions, then. Don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Uh, really appreciate all the support, guys. And yeah, looking forward to more uh, deep runs, especially on Twitch. That's always a hell of a ride and a lot of fun. So thanks for tuning in and see you guys next time.